I had this fear that something would happen. You know something's wrong, and especially if your kid's not home. The dreaded phone call that you get. It was a nightmare. It's like a parent's worst fear. At six foot five, 185 pounds, Richard Stafford ruled the gridiron. He was not afraid of anyone or anything. Incredibly good looking with a personality to match, Richard was who everyone else wanted to be. When you have teenagers, whether it's boys or girls, but I think especially boys, because they more so think they're invincible and nothing's gonna happen to them. On January 14, 2010, Richard was convinced he could make it home following a night of drinking with friends. He left, it started home, we talked on the phone, trying to guide him for, so we could find him, and he could not tell us. Finally, after about 30 minutes, he recognized some places he told me, and I knew where he was at in West Point, and told him to pull over, that I'd come get him. And he said, no, I can make it now. I know where I'm at. And he hung up. This is Pontotoc 911. We have a one-car motor vehicle accident. At he was airlifted to Tupelo, where doctors immediately knew his diagnosis. It wasn't but a matter of minutes, and the neurosurgeon came in and told us that uh, he had a sheer brain injury, and that meant that his uh, brain had slid from side to side and front to back inside his skull, and tore millions of axons and neurons, and that there was nothing they could do to repair that damage, no surgery. And he said, he's probably gonna be this way for a long time. And then he said, you know, you can't take care of him at home. He's gonna be in a long-term care facility and be in a vegetative state for the rest of his life. It would be nearly six months before Richard opened his eyes. And when he did, he quickly realized that those friends had walked away. He was alone now, facing the future with only his nurses, his doctors, and his family. I knew when I was in and out the bed, and I was looking around. Where are your friends when you need them? Yeah, they were there that night. But when I got in my in my mind, started wondering. I sit right there in front of that door and wonder because I couldn't talk. And wonder, am I ever gonna walk or talk? You're living a dream. You're, you're gonna run to the end of your road one day, and you think you've got all the friends. I had every friend known, and they all looked up to me. I missed that. It felt good to have people look at you and say, man, that's Richard. I want to be like him, because I played football and was good and loved it and loved the fact that everybody was looking at me. I will tell you, it all runs out, and when it does, your friends are going to stick around for a little while. But why didn't you put on your seatbelt? Because I thought I didn't need it. I thought I'm too big and too bad. 
I thought I was Superman. Well, look at me now. I only got one arm that works. You're not who you think you are. You think you are the man. Nobody, like I said before, nobody can touch me. Richard remains determined to defy the odds and walk again. Five days a week, he walks for an hour and a half on his treadmill. The Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation Services has worked with Richard for many years to help him achieve his goal of regaining his independence. His former counselor, Melanie Hickman, says Richard has made incredible progress. He wasn't walking when I first started with him, and it just keeps growing. I mean, he's on a walker uh, a lot of the day. I mean, he's walking around, so he is really, I mean, I've seen him grow, uh, getting out in the community more and just kind of being a mentor and, and encouraging kids and adults and everybody. He's just a, a really big inspiration. MDRS also modified his truck, giving him even more independence. Both Natalie and Richard say they are grateful for MDRS. I would just say thank y'all that y'all have been such a blessing to uh, myself and I know to Richard. And as he said, the people are so nice. It's been like a family, not like just employees right. and, a, and a company providing services. You get to know Richard, everybody has, and they love him and uh, put up with his craziness and goofiness. And um, if, like I said, if we have a need, I just pick up the phone and everyone is so helpful with us, and so we appreciate that more than you could ever know. As a featured speaker in the prom program, he lets teenagers see firsthand what happens when you make the wrong choices. He has great plans for the future. You're going to walk. Oh yeah, I'm going to run. If you would like more information about the Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation Services, visit mdrs.ms.gov.